Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told out of Voice of Radio, so today we need to take a look at what is likely to be, no guarantees, obviously, but what is likely to be the most expensive cards from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Of course, pre-releases for the Scarlet and Violet TCG start this weekend, so this is a really good time to sit and have a look at which of these cards, in terms of value, are going to be the ones you need to be pulling. Now, a couple of caveats before we get going. Essentially, what we're looking at here is in terms of what's going on in Japan combined with English trends, which is a very important caveat. So let's start off with the big card over in Japan. It's Miriam. Miriam is very clearly the big card, Scarlet and Violet wise, over in Japan. And there really isn't much of a question. And we have seen the official reveal of Miriam. We know it's coming in the set, it is official. We also know that over in Japan, it is a card which is currently selling for in the region of 118,000 yen. Don't worry about the currency conversion, I'll do it for you. That is an $886 card. That is ridiculous. Is it going to be an $886 card over here? No. No, it's not, ladies and gentlemen. No, it's not. And I feel pretty good about this, quite frankly. Because we see this happen with supporters over in Japan, and it doesn't happen that way over here. Take Serena as an example. Over in Japan, Serena is currently selling for around about 62,000 yen. 62,000 yen is $465. That is clearly a very, very, very expensive card. That is a kind of card which is going to make your eyes water just a little bit. $665 is a ridiculous amount for a supporter card. What's it currently selling for on TCG Player? 40 bucks. Now, I'm delighted to say I actually have the Japanese version of this. And look, I could give you a bunch of more examples. Uh, Gloria is a very expensive card over in Japan. That was a really big one. Uh, Gloria over here is a $12 card. Now, that was Trainer Gallery, which is why it's a little bit less again. Trainer Gallery holds, like, no value, pretty much, except for a couple of rare exceptions. My point is, I'm not telling you that the Miriam Special Art Rare is going to be a ridiculously cheap card. But I am telling you that there is a very, very, very clear trend whereby, in the past, these full art supporters in Japan that have been ridiculous prices haven't been that way over here. Now, they are special art rares, which admittedly is a big thing. And that means that there could be a bit of a change. But, you know, Serena's a $465 card over in Japan. That is what it converts as. And a $40 card over here. So maybe Miriam gets up to like $100, maybe even a bit above that. But it, it's not going to end up like it was in Japan. We kind of know that. Now, the one that makes me really sad here is the Special Art Rare of Penny. This is another card, which is going to be very, very expensive. Now, over in Japan, and again, it's not going to be this high, but over in Japan, this card is trending at about $345. That's about what we're paying for this. And it's not going to be that high, let's be clear. Like I've said, supporter cards especially are quite a lot cheaper over here than they are over in Japan. But it still makes me sad, ladies and gentlemen, that this is going to end up being a really expensive card. For me, it's really clear, it's the Okacheke artwork. I'm an Okacheke fan, I collect Okacheke cards. I can't afford the Japanese version of this. Like, there's no way I can be spending $345 on a single card right now. I have three kids and a mortgage. I would love the Japanese version of Penny, but I opened a box of Scarlet. I didn't pull it as my secret rare from the box. So I'm just going to have to chill for a little bit. Maybe it comes down in price. Maybe I can open a, another box in the future. Maybe I can get some cars that jump in value and I can use them to trade for a Japanese version of this. Right now, it is completely out of my reach. I cannot get the Japanese version of this card. With all of that said, I still feel confident that I can get the English version of this card. I feel, and I don't know for a fact, obviously, but I feel pretty confident that I'm going to be able to pick up the English version of this card 
for a reasonable amount of money. And maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If it happens, it happens. But I, I feel pretty confident here that I'm going to be able to get this for a decent price. It's still going to be one of the most expensive cards in the set, let's be perfectly clear. It's going to be one of the most expensive cards in the set on release. My point is that it's not going to get quite to the Japanese levels. Now, obviously, if the Special Art Rare Miriam is going to be ridiculously expensive, then the Full Art of Miriam is also going to be very expensive, and it is going to be very expensive. This is another card which is going to really jump up, and it, it, you're going to have to pay for it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, right now, over in Japan, this is trending as about a $320 card. Again, it's not going to be anywhere near that over here. This is probably going to be like a $50 card. And it's going to be way more expensive than that when the pre-releases happen. I'll bring you my video next week telling you to not buy pre-release singles. Because people keep doing it and it's silly, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm, I'm going to keep telling you. But yeah, people are going to try overcharging. It's going to be cheaper than in Japan. But it's going to be very expensive. And in terms of supporter cards, they are the big three. Special Art Rare Miriam, Special Art Rare Penny and Full Art Miriam. They are going to be big. Uh, the Full Art Penny is also going to be an expensive card, but it's not going to be anywhere near as high. Like over in Japan, that's trending as a 95-ish dollar card, a little bit of rounding. And you know what? That's about right. Th this should come down to like a $30 card quick enough. That's my prediction anyway. That's what we generally tend to see. For me, it is just desperately hoping that that Okacheke Penny... I've given up on the Japanese version. I want it in my Okacheke binder. I know I can't have it. It makes me sad, but that's the way it goes. But I do feel confident that the English version of that card will be affordable. And that makes me very happy indeed. But what about Pokemon, Wossy? What's going on with Pokemon? Well, we got a pretty clear trio here. In this order, Special Art Rare of Maridon... Special Art Rare of Gardevoir, although they are trending actually really close at the moment. And quite a bit behind, Special Art Rare of Coridon. Coridon is about half of the value of those two as it stands at the moment over in Japan. The reason is very simple. The maridon has got that amazing ability, lets you search for two basic lightning Pokemon and bench them. And a decent attack, free energy 220. Gardevoir's got that amazing ability, lets you attach as much psychic energy from your discard to your psychic Pokemon as you like. Although you have to take two damage counters on the Pokemon to which you attach every time. And Coridon's just not as good. You can accelerate fighting energy, which is great, but it ends your turn to do so. So it is fair to say that's not on the same level. And I don't think that is a um, particularly controversial statement. So over in Japan, your Maridon and your Gardevoir are trending at like... About 28,000 yen. So you're talking about $210. Whereas your Coridon is trending at a far more reasonable 14,000 yen. Which is pretty much exactly, well it's basically exactly half. Which means it's about 105. But the thing I want to remind you of here is that there's no way these are going to be $210 cards. Like the special art rare of Charizard. The one that came around in Brilliant Stars is like a $170 card. The Special Art Rare of Lugia V is a $180 card. There is absolutely no way these cards end up just jumping above them and staying there significantly. They might be around about the same ballpark. And, and I, again, this is a prediction. I could be wrong. But... Lugia and Charizard are not just, well, the Lugia is playable, the Charizard isn't. They are ridiculously popular Pokemon. Lugia is one of the most popular Pokemon out there and is a ludicrously playable card. So sure, yes, Miraidon is very, very playable. But is it going to be as good as Lugia? Probably not. Lugia has been ruling the format in a ridiculous manner. Is it as popular a Pokemon as Lugia? I feel very confident saying no. So, I just don't see this settling higher than Lugia. It could, but when Lugia is a more playable and more popular Pokemon, I, I see Lugia settling quite a bit higher. And honestly, after that, the only other card that's really worth mentioning is the Gold Nest Ball. This is currently trending a little bit below all the ones I've told you about. There is a little bit of a drop-off. In Japan, this is trending as a $70 card. Although, again, don't expect this to be a $70 card over here. 
Let, let's be perfectly clear. It is not going to be a, a $70 card. Like, when you see something like Gold Choice Bout being a $15 card, and Choice Bout is very, very playable, sees a ridiculous amount of play in a ridiculous amount of decks, I don't see Nestball being $70. Yeah, Nestle's a great card. Yes, the gold version is going to be, you know, one of the most popular and valuable cards in the Scarlet and Violet set, but it's not going to be a $70 card. And the point I'm going for here is not about value. Like I've said, I expect most of these values, especially the supporter cards, to be significantly, and I mean significantly, lower than than they are over in Japan. But these are the ones to watch. These are the cards. Your big free supporters are your special art rare of Miriam, special art rare of Penny, and your full art of Miriam. With an honourable mention to the full art Penny, which is a fair bit below the other three. Your big free Pokemon are your special art rares of Miraidon, Gardevoir, and Coridon, probably in that order. Although you could switch Miraidon and Gardevoir around. They're very similar. And then after that, it's really just the gold nest ball, which has any real chance of being a particularly popular or valuable card. After that, the drop-off is it's pretty pronounced, if I'm honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pretty steep drop-off. So there we go. They are the cards you're looking at from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. You are now fully informed, and now it's over to you guys. Obviously, for me, I'm looking at the Okacheke Mavastiff here, because that is an absolutely stunning card. I'm looking at the special art rares of Great Tusk and Iron Treads, because those are, again, Pokemon that I just absolutely adore, and I want them, ladies and gentlemen. I want them very, very badly. But for you guys, you're going to have your own chase cards. This was just a general, hey, here are the ones to be looking out for. And now it's over to you guys. Tell me which of these cards you're excited for. Tell me which ones you want to be picking up. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games. All kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord and chat with us about Pokemon or anything else and get shout outs on the channel like the lovely Austin Montville who is one of our newer supporters over at Patreon and seems to be a very lovely person. So thank you very much for your support and for being a very lovely person. But by far the most important thing is always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.